Do you know that you can literally rewire your brain at any age, at any stage in your life, and you can have instant access and the ability to go from a state of scattered or stressed out to a state of calm in an instant? In this episode, I'm going to teach you the exact tools that you need in order to be able to do this in an instant. I'm going to share with you some incredible free resources that you're gonna love. And I'm also gonna share a bit of the science behind why this is so important and applicable in your life. First, I wanna make sure that you understand how this can benefit you. You know, the reality is, is that we all have stress in our lives. And I think, you know, we need to not think of stress as being stressful, as silly as that sounds. Pretty much, if you have a job, if you have a family, if you have relationships, we have stress in our lives. We are intended to. There's actually been stories that show when you take trees and you take them out of an environment of stress and you put them in these controlled environments where they don't have wind or environmental stress, the trees die. We literally have to have stress in our lives. It's part of the human experience. What we don't have to have, what many of us currently have, is when we get stressed out, we tend to stay in these loops. We tend to stay in a state of fight or flight, when instead what we can actually do is get ourselves into a place of calm. The reason this is so important is that we often have no control over what's going on outside of us, right? Whether that's circumstances in the world or situations going on around us, things in our relationships, things at work, traffic, (laughs) nasty checkout clerks at Target, like whatever it is, we can't control that. The only thing we can control is our internal state. Okay, so in this episode, I'm literally going to share how you do it. You're going to know exactly what to do. I'm going to share, like I said, some free tools and resources. And at the end, honestly, I'm going to share how powerful this really is and what this is all about to me. And you're not going to want to miss this. So make sure you hang out to the end. All right. So let's dive in. Here's the how. You ready? So we are going to rewire our brains by just simply getting super intentional with how we spend the first few minutes of our day. Actually, the first few minutes and the last few minutes of our day are both very important bookends, but for the sake of simplicity, in this episode, I'm strictly going to be focusing on the first part of the day, and I'll save the later part of the day for another future episode. So again, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that one when it comes out. Why is spending simply a few minutes being intentional with this morning time so powerful that you can literally rewire your brain? The reason is, is that when we wake up, when we transition from our dreamlike sleepy state Before we get on with our day, we are in this magical brainwave state that is highly suggestible. It's highly influential. Basically, think of anything that you are surrounding yourself with at this time, whether it's whatever you're hearing, whatever you're seeing, it's a direct path to your subconscious. What does that mean? It means anything that you're taking in is basically programming your neurology. So this is really powerful and also kind of reminds you of how important this time can be in shielding yourself from certain things. This magical brainwave state is called alpha. And I am going to talk just a little bit about the science in here. I want to keep it, again, super simple. But I really want you guys to understand how powerful what you're doing is. This isn't just anecdotal. This isn't just stuff that I do and have seen the power of the change of this in my life, which I have. And I'm going to share personally some some ways that's impacted my life. But this is literally neurologically, you are changing the way that your nervous system is wired and you are teaching it how to access a state of calm. And for any woman listening, for any mom listening, if that is not something that we need in our lives, I don't know what is. We have so many things going on outside of us, whether it's the job, the family, the friends, the relationships, that our body can constantly be in a state of fight or flight. It can constantly be in a state of reaction. Uh, It can constantly be in a state of just kind of going with whatever is happening around us. And if the one thing, the one thing that we can do in our life amongst everything else that's going on with our family, our friends, our coworkers, our loved ones, is to control the inner chaos and be able to get in the state of connected calm, everything around us is gonna happen more smoothly. Everybody around us is gonna feel more supported by our energy just with doing that. This is so, so powerful. The first step in the how is we are going to carve out space in the morning for nothingness. This sounds crazy. And don't worry, I'm going to walk you through exactly what to do because we're human beings, but we've become human doings. And so we need the to-do steps, even though this whole thing is about being. (laughs) 
I get it, though. I have to do this every day. I have to reframe it every day because it's a muscle, right? And I'm going to talk about that. It's a muscle we have to strengthen. We spend the majority of our lives in beta brainwaves instead of alpha. So in this episode, again, I'm going to be focusing on alpha and beta brainwaves, even though there's a variety of others. We spend most of our life in beta. Beta is what I like to refer to as the get shit done brainwave. So beta is when we're kind of in our to-dos of the day, we're in the zone, right? Like we're getting it done. We might have a bit of cortisol going. We might have a bit of stress. It's basically like when we're doing all the things, we are in beta. Alpha, on the other hand, is this beautiful state that is calm and relax. Think about when you wake up, right? You might actually call it fuzzy or sleepy. What I want to start to do is reframe some of these words for you as we step into the power of alpha, because at the beginning, it's going to feel really weird. It's going to feel very bizarre. It's going to feel like you're not doing anything and like you're supposed to be doing something. So when I first talk to people about using some of this morning time and sitting in the nothingness, and again, don't worry, I will give you action steps so you can actually anchor to doing something. But I always get the same questions. Okay, what do I do? How long do I do it for? What am I listening to when I'm doing this? How do I know when I'm doing it right, right? Again, we clearly have become human doings when we're really human beings. We need the to-dos. We need the task. We need someone to tell us exactly what to do. In reality, this whole process is less about doing things to become a version of you that you need to grow into. And this is more about what you're not going to be doing. This is more about releasing and letting go of some of the habits that we've created in the mornings that pull us away from who we actually are. And that is where the true magic of this sits. This is simply about getting you back to you. We've just forgotten who that person is because there's all this stuff on the outside. So as you are starting to carve out this space to get back to you, and again, I'm going to walk you through exactly what your morning's going to look like in a minute, it's going to feel weird you are literally strengthening a new muscle. So think about the last time maybe you started going to the gym or maybe you started a new workout or maybe you took yoga for the first time or pickleball, whatever it is. It feels really weird. It feels really awkward. You don't yet have the neural synapses and the neural connections and the pathways in your brain that make this something that happens really easy for you. That's what's gonna happen when you first start to sit with yourself in the morning. Think about this like you were literally training a muscle. And just like if you went to the gym and your goal was like nice toned biceps for the summer, you don't go to the gym once to do that. You go to the gym, it feels awkward, you probably get a little sore, it feels a little weird. You get consistent in order to make those changes and to create not only the muscles, but the neural pathways that make that movement easier and familiar. That's what we were going to do together. And one of the really, really important tools and resources that I want to give to you is that I will literally do this with you in the 31 day self with challenge. I will literally walk through with you as if I'm a personal trainer, helping you train those bicep muscles. You are not alone in this. Go ahead, join that challenge. The link is below in the description and we will walk through this together. So that's one of the tools that I wanna share in this video. Here's also something that I wanna touch on that's probably gonna happen when you first start to do this. And I want to bring in alpha and beta again to this part of the conversation, because this is really important. So for many of us women, when we first wake up, what happens? We go right into go mode, right? Maybe we're sleepy. Maybe we're one of those people that like wakes up slowly. Okay, fine. So then what do we do? Probably we slam the caffeine so that we can go into go mode. Am I right? So once we go into go mode, That usually looks like, at least I know this is in my brain, I'm assuming it's in yours, you let me know in the comments, that looks like, how am I getting everyone everywhere today? Like literally going through the day, right? The Let's call it the logistics of the day. So comment below, do you go through the logistics of the day? Because that would be the first thing I would be doing, right? How am I getting this person here? Where does this person need to be? What color does this kid need to wear for this day of spirit week? (laughs) What groceries did I forget for the meal planning? What meetings do I have, right? We go right into logistics. I want to pump the brakes. And this step is really big on trust, right? So when we are working on sitting and when we are working on strengthening this muscle, there's two main things that become really important. The tools, which I shared one, I'm going to share another one with you soon, and trust. And here's why trust is really important because we are used to, as women, juggling it all. 
And so there's this piece of, oh my gosh, if I don't wake up and go right into the the logistics, like who's going to handle it? Or what if I forget? Well, here is where alpha and beta become really important. So remember, we live most of our life, we live most of our daily mom or woman brain in beta, getting it all done, figuring it all out, running around, making thousands of decisions a day. Alpha is actually where we are primed for clarity. Guess what? Intuition, decision-making, peak performance, and insights. And so if all we do is simply spend some time in alpha each morning, and I'll teach you how to do that. (laughs) Later in the day, we have access to the benefits of alpha even when we're not in it. So think about logistics, right? Think about figuring out who's getting where and what's for dinner and what ingredient did you forget to get? Well, if you can have instant access to getting reconnected with yourself and stepping into your insights, your clarity, your calm, your focus, your peak performance, From a calm, regulated state, that's the key to alpha. In alpha, when we can access alpha, we are in a calm, regulated state. Like, how much easier will all the things that you juggle be, right? Let's paint a picture of this for a minute. Let's paint a picture of one of the typical days when we wake up as a woman and we don't carve out this time for ourselves because, I don't know, we feel like it's selfish and we feel like we shouldn't do it. And we feel like we don't have time. Or we feel like our kids need us. Or the emails need to be answered before the day starts. Like, what about a typical day in the life of a woman. You get up, maybe you slam some caffeine, maybe you don't. You hit the emails, you hit the logistics, you hit breakfast, you hit the car, (laughs) like all the things. And think about how you feel and how you perform, how you show up in the world when that is your day. You think about if you are in that go, 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 do, 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 and something doesn't go right, which is bound to happen, right? Something doesn't go right. Either your kid gets sick and you have to pick them up from school, or someone has a meltdown, or you're in a traffic jam, or any of the million things that could happen, like you're going to get triggered. You're going to react. You're going to fly off the handle more likely than think about the other days. Think about the days here and there where you've maybe like had a nice morning and you've kind of eased into your day and all that stuff happens around you and you're just like, "Eh, eh, I can handle it, right? I think about this when I'm in, I mean, we live in Miami. We're in massive traffic all the time. And I literally, when we're riding with kids, I mean, you can see the people raging in their cars and all I can think when I see them, and it's I can only think this because I know it because I experience it, is like they did not take that sit time in the morning. And so this is about trust. And this is about trusting that by putting the logistics to the side for just a minute and allowing yourself this time and space, you are going to be better equipped to handle those logistics later. And just like we talked about training the muscle, I will tell you from experience, this is something I had to keep reminding myself, it's okay, I'm not letting the balls drop. I will get to this. And then also over time, seeing how true that was, like seeing how much I could get through in my day, how efficiently I could do it. But more importantly, like the state that I was in while I was accomplishing these things is what helped me grow that trust bank, right? That's what helps me in the mornings when I'm like, no, I got to do this. I got to do that. I'm like, "Uh uh-uh. I know that I'm going to be able to do all this and that when I take these five minutes to myself. Another piece, so it's the tools, it's the trust, and there's also a forgiveness piece, and I'm going to talk about that in a little bit, so make sure you hang on here. Hey, listen, as you're listening, if you enjoy this episode, go ahead and just take a minute and throw a like under it. I would love to hear, you know, any takeaways that you have from this episode, how you're going to implement these changes in your life, any comments you would love to share, I would love to hear. And of course, at some point in this episode, you are going to think about someone in your life that can use this information. Go ahead and click that share button. You can always hit pause, click that share button and send it their way. Lastly, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes because these are the tools I'm going to continue to bring to you for free. My mission is to help women create deeper connections with ourselves and one another. And what happens is when we can create these connections with ourselves, when we can know exactly through these tools how to get reconnected, how to get from a state of stress or scattered or focused on outside circumstances and get back to a state of tuning inward, connected with ourselves, that is how we can access calm. That is where we find peace, clarity, and honestly, freedom. Okay.
So we are just about to literally walk through the exact logistics of what you're going to do and how you're going to set this up. But real quick, I just want to make this real personal. I always like to share with you guys uh, the side of me so that you understand why I'm doing all these things. You know, a matter of a few years ago, I was doing what I like to call a power hour in the morning. And so mornings have always been a really sacred time for me to do whatever it is that helped me feel like I was getting ahead of the day. That's always been my time to work out. It's really been the time for myself for a while, but the things that I was doing were not serving me. So you might be someone who's literally not taking any time to yourself in the morning and just waking up and hitting the day and you know, going into the motions and starting the day in reaction. I think that's a huge reality for a lot of women. And if so, everything in this episode is so powerful for you. I also want to talk to the woman who perhaps is in the same situation that I was in for a long time. I was taking what I thought was intentional time in the morning and filling my cup. I was waking up. I was slamming some really strong coffee. The coffee for me wasn't strong enough unless it made my armpit sweaty because I like Swedish coffee and Swedish coffee is the kind of coffee you could chew. <laughs> I was chugging said coffee while I was catching up on all the emails to get ahead of the day before I hit my 5.45 a.m. CrossFit class and would flip some tires while my body was still like stiff from the night. So although from the outside, it looked and felt like I had this morning to myself, I was filling my cup. I was literally training my nervous system to be in a state of fight or flight. First thing in the morning, remember that highly suggestible state, what was I doing? Slamming the caffeine. And the reason I was doing that is because I felt like I needed to bring a certain energy to the day. I mean, how many of us have done this and how many social situations? What kind of energy do I need to bring into this room? Who do these people want me to be, right? So that was a question I kept constantly asking myself, like, what kind of energy do I need to bring to this day? And for whatever reason, the answer was always like super high energy. I don't know why we do that as women. There's so many times when we feel the need to be quieter or internal, and I don't know why we shame ourselves for that, but there is so much power in that. There is so much power in our quiet. There is so much power in an internal state. And you know, just quick sidebar here, the questions we ask ourselves are really powerful because you will find the answers, right? So now what I do in the morning or in those moments walking into social situations, I don't ask what everybody else needs me to be because the last thing we need is someone in our lives pretending to be someone they're not. I ask, what is it that I need? And if I get the answer that I need quiet, I need internal, I need alone time, but I don't have access to it, which I think is like the reality of a lot of our day-to-day -day lives, morning time aside, there are ways that we can reframe our intention for the day. You know, I, instead of feeling like I need to be the energy in the room and I need to give, what if I just simply took a listening role? What if I simply made my intention today to be fully present with whoever's in front of me? That allows me to be internal. So, you know, I just wanted to share from my personal experience how taking a morning that felt and looked like I was doing things for myself was very different and had very different results from now an intentional morning where I am maximizing out this alpha brainwave time and you are going to too. And the goal and the purpose here is to ease into your day, again, giving yourself access to that connectedness, giving yourself access to that calm so that you can more easily find it later. You are subconsciously training your nervous system to find calm states throughout the day. In my past version, my power hour, my flipping tires version, I was subconsciously training my nervous system to find fight or flight. Whatever input in we have at that highly suggestible morning time, we are going to find and create throughout our day. The other thing that I would do in the mornings, and this is really important in flexing that muscle and making this change, right? At the beginning, it's going to feel weird. So when I would wake up as I was transitioning into easing into my morning, I would start to feel like, what am I missing? What am I forgetting to do? This feels really weird. This feels really uncomfortable. I shouldn't be having this easy of a morning. Again, whatever questions you ask yourself, you will find the answer to. So in the past, I would say things like, what am I missing? Well, let me go on an email and find out. Who needs me? Let me go on an email and find out. Let me check my text messages. How about instead, like, how can I bring more joy into this day? How can I find calm throughout this day? We're replacing those questions when you're feeling weird and like you're missing something with, this feels really calm. This feels really content. It's okay for me to feel like my life is easy. It's safe to be easy. Like these are things for whatever reason as women, like we just in our brains, we don't think it's okay to have ease in our life. 
These reframes are really powerful as you're making the switch and as you're strengthening this muscle. Okay, okay, we're finally here. Thank you for your patience. Let's exactly walk through how to do this every single morning. Okay, so here's what you're gonna do. One, you're gonna create what I like to call a sit spot. I'm gonna show you mine if you're watching this on YouTube because what's really powerful with having a sit spot, and don't worry if you're listening on the podcast, I will tell you exactly what to do, is that when you wake up and you get out of your bed, and you do wanna get out of your bed so you don't fall back asleep, you're gonna ease into the sit spot. You don't first have to figure out where you are going. You don't have to step into logistics and making decisions yet. So a sit spot, here's some things that I recommend in your sit spot. One, be intentional with your lighting. So the lighting in your sit spot should only be red or amber. Avoid any white or blue light. So the typical lighting in all of our homes is white light and blue light. The problem with white light and blue light is it'll fast track you out of alpha into beta. So in my sit spot, I've got some sources of light that I love. I will link them below. Some of them cost very little. Some of them are a little bit more of an investment and have a therapeutic benefit. I've got this amazing PEMF mat that I sit on. And actually there's a setting on there for alpha brainwaves that helps stimulate alpha. So I've got, you know, over the years, I've accumulated a really yummy sit spot. Other things you can also do is you can burn incense. You can burn candles. You can load a diffuser with your favorite essential oil. You can put on some nice meditation music. I suggest music with no words, right? We don't want to go into like logistics and left brain. We want to stay kind of in our creative, easy flow, which is more right brain. That's a whole other topic, but basically just, you know, chants, meditations, maybe some ocean waves or sounds, some rain sounds, thunderstorms, anything like that is really nice. You know, you can really think about all your senses and how you can touch on them, right? Sight, smell, um, what you're hearing. Also, what you're looking at. Okay, so here's where the to-dos come in because I know you want the to-dos. I do too. <laughs> the things I suggest doing during this time, there's about three options I would choose from. One, you could journal. So whatever's coming up during this time, you will start to see patterns each morning if you start to write in your journal. And please know that journaling does not have to look any perfect way. If you're someone who's afraid to write because you're afraid someone might find it, write it and rip it up if you need to. But you will start to see patterns in your life. Journaling is where we can really get good insight into what we want more of, what we want less of, things that we need to work on, maybe possible triggers that we have in our life, whether it's people or situations. All these give insight into who we are at the core and get us back reconnected with her, which is really, really powerful. I have a journal that I created. You can grab it. I'll link it below. This is a 31-day journal. I literally put on each page three things for you each day. So I've got powerful information behind why taking this time can impact your life, whether it's like calming anxiety, uh, decreasing stress, all the things. I put a journal prompt on each page to get your writing if you need that. And then I put an inspirational quote at the bottom. The other thing you can do during this time is nothing. If you're someone who's good with doing nothing, that is exactly what you do. There's an app that I used to use all the time when I first got into this. It's called Insight Timer. And you literally set it. So I would set it for like five minutes at the beginning. You could set like a gong to go off every minute as kind of an indicator if your thoughts are kind of wandering. When I heard that gong, it helped bring me back in. Basically, thoughts are going to come up during this time, and our goal is to just kindly let them like float and drift away and get back into our center. It's a really interesting practice and exercise, but the Insight Timer app is something that really helped me. So that's a great tool if you just want to do nothing and just sit there and be fuzzy. I think that's beautiful. The other thing is a book. I will continue to say this. Books are the gateway tool to reconnection with ourself. Why? Because when is the last time that you were actually comfortable sitting with yourself? It feels so weird to do when we first get started. We don't know what to do. And so we distract ourselves out of it with our phone. We get on emails. We check our phone. We start doing all the things on there. A book is the gateway tool to get back reconnected with ourselves. because if you can simply ditch the phone and hold a book instead and grab that book and read that book, you are going to be more likely to create connection with yourself than to get pulled into the outside world. And hey, guess what? If you, during that time, grab a book that I suggest in my online book club for women, you are going to fast track that connection with yourself because those are the only kind of books that I choose. So you can get information on that in the description as well. I would love to have you in this growing community of women. Okay, what not to do. This is actually the bigger step because, again, I really, really want you to understand this. This is so important. You are perfect as you are 
it's all this stuff that we've accumulated on top of us, all the masks that we wear, the people that we pretend to be because we're not comfortable in our own skin. We're not comfortable in the quirky weirdness that we are. If we could all just get back to that state, be a better place. But this is about getting rid of and letting go of some of the habits that we've accumulated because we feel that there's some way that we're supposed to show up in the world. This is about getting rid of the things that we do to prove our sense of worth by getting done. This is about getting back to being a human being rather than a human doing. So what not to do? Stay out of logistics, okay? So when those things pop into your head about all your to-dos for the day, we're going to kindly nudge them aside. This is going to get easier as we can trust that we will get it all done later and we're going to get it done in a better way. If you need, in the meantime, if it's just like too hard, these things are coming out and you're just worried you're going to forget, put some paper next to you, write them down so then they're out of your head. The other thing not to do, no white light or blue light. Again, that gets you right into beta. You completely miss alpha when you have that light. So that is probably one of the most important things in your sit spot. If you can't do anything else, I would get yourself like a great little red light bulb, stick it in a lamp and sit next to it. There's also an amazing amber book light that I use on all my books when I read in the morning. I'll link that below as well. Strictly amber light. So no blue or white light. The big, big, big one to not do, this is if you take nothing else away from this episode, but this, don't do digital the first at least five minutes of your day. Digital meaning social media, emails, the news, anything on a device, anything on a phone, anything on a computer. If you simply ditched that for the first few minutes of your waking day, that is a win and you will be in alpha. It doesn't matter pretty much what else you do, but staying off that device is huge. Remember at first, this is going to feel really weird. You are creating a new habit. You are strengthening new muscles. So always keep going back to that example of at the gym. It's okay. It's going to feel unfamiliar. It's going to feel awkward. You're going to feel like you're doing it wrong. It's over time with the consistency that you are going to form new neural pathways. This is going to become something that you just do because it feels so good. Think about another analogy. If you currently brush your teeth with your right hand and you went to switch and use your non-dominant hand at the beginning, that would feel really weird. It'd feel really awkward. But if you stayed consistent over time in a matter of probably a week or maybe two, you would be able to do it without even thinking about it. And that's what's going to happen when you create this ritual and this habit. And that's why with my resources, both of them are 31 days, right? The 31 day challenge of being self with and the 31 day journal. It takes 21 days to change a habit. And so I give you 10 extra just to nail it home and make sure that we lock this in. I want to share that this is literally something that I still work on every single day. This is still something that I have to remind myself every single day to do, or should I say the things to not do. And this is where, you know, at the beginning of this episode, I talked about the tools, the trust, and the forgiveness. And this is where the forgiveness piece comes in. Because there are days you're going to set this intention, and there are going to be mornings where life happens. And for whatever reason, you just don't carve out this time for yourself. And over time, what's going to happen is those days are going to feel dramatically, obviously different from the way that you have started to feel more connected, more peaceful, more grounded, more calm. And so when you slip up and you don't take this few minutes in the morning and you have what I like to call a day, you are going to possibly, I hope not, but if you're anything like me and what I used to do, you could beat yourself up. Like one, the day doesn't feel great. Maybe you blew up at someone in traffic, or maybe you didn't show up for your kids the way that you wanted to. Maybe you honestly completely struggled to be present with them. Maybe your head was going so fast with all the details and all the logistics, of course, right, that you had to take care of today that you weren't able to fully listen when your little kid wanted to tell you something or your big kid or your partner. This is about forgiveness. The last thing that we need to do on those days is beat ourselves up. When those days happen for me or when I let those days happen, I'm grateful because it's literally accountability and reminds me how I no longer want my life to feel. And it reminds me of how powerful that morning time is. And that is where the trust comes. That is where I start to see like everything can wait. I trust that taking these five minutes is going to make my entire day feel different. It's going to make my entire family have a different day. So in those days, I also forgive myself. I forgive myself for not showing up the way that I want to, or I forgive myself for perhaps snapping at someone. Tomorrow's a new day and I'm going to have a fresh start and I'm going to sit for five minutes and I'm going to have a better day. 
Okay, so what I want you to do now from this episode, I want you to not just simply listen to this and have what I like to call a jacuzzi experience. Jacuzzi experience is where you sit through something and it feels really good, but at the end of the day, nothing changes. I want you to actually make and implement these changes in your life because it's so easy, it's so attainable, and it will 100% change the way that you show up in the world. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to join one of my free challenges. If you feel called to it, go ahead and click the link and grab the journal for the 31-day challenge. This will walk you through exactly what you need to do every single morning. You don't need to get on digital to check any of the emails or anything like that. The journal is such a great tool. This is also an incredible gift for you to pass on to a girlfriend or a family member or any other woman in your life that you want to share this information with. Lastly, be sure to check out the community of women that is growing in the online book club. These are women looking to create deeper connections with themselves, and we are doing this together by reading incredible books. Some of the books that we've read together so far are Michael Singer, Untethered Soul. We've read Dr. Joe Dispenza, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. We've read James Clear, Atomic Habits. We are reading books that help us create deeper connections with ourselves that helps share tools with us on how to create deeper connections with ourselves. And again, remember, when we can do that, we don't have to control everything in the outside world. We can't. We can only control what's inside of us. We can only control our internal state. And when we can do that, when we can get quickly into reconnection after we've been scattered or stressed, that's where we truly find peace, clarity, and freedom. If you only spend five minutes of your day in Alpha, And I hope from this you end up enjoying it so much that you spend more. But if you only spend five minutes, you are going to be a better mother. You are going to feel more calm. You are going to be more present with your children. If you don't have kids, you are going to be a better partner. You are going to show up in a way that people want to be around your energy because it's so calm and secure and confident and zen. You're going to have a greater capacity for the big emotions of perhaps your children or your loved ones or anyone else in your life. You are going to get to live from a place of get to rather than have to. Here's what's really going to happen. Here's the magic of what actually is going to happen. Yes, you're going to be a better mother. Yes, you're going to show up as a better partner. Yes, you're going to have more energy and capacity to hold everybody else's emotions around you. But let's make this about you for a second. When you take this time and get to create a deeper connection with yourself and get to know yourself better, you are going to start to understand who you are. You're going to start to understand with complete clarity what it is that you want out of your life and desire, and you are going to start taking action steps before you know it and getting closer to it. This entire thing, everything I'm doing on this platform is helping you get rid of all the stuff that we've accumulated around us that's preventing us from actually showing up as our true self. And the more that we do this, it becomes so clear why we are here on this planet that you will start to feel pulled into the life of your dreams. You will start to feel pulled into the direction of getting closer to all that you desire. We are all here for a reason. We all have a purpose. We all have a calling. And the closer we get to connecting with ourselves, the more loudly we're going to hear it. We accumulate all this outside noise, especially as women, that pulls us away from this direct connection with ourself. And when we can get back connected with ourself, which is exactly what you're gonna do from the tools in this episode, those messages about what you're here to do and who you are and why you're here will no longer be whispers. They're gonna be so loud that you can't ignore them. You are gonna step into your calling, your purpose for why you're here. And I will tell you on the other side of this, life becomes so much more fun and enjoyable. And to me, this is what this is really about. If you need to leverage it and think about doing this for everyone else around you, I think that's great because honestly, that is why I started doing it. I needed to make it about everybody else. But for a minute, even just for a minute, can you think about how enjoyable your life could be on the other side of this if you actually got back to yourself and understood your true calling and your true purpose and why you're here on this planet and what you're here to do? Because that's actually what we're doing here. I am so happy that you're here with me on this journey. I have so much more to share with you. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. If you enjoyed this video, throw a like under it. As always, I would love to hear your comments and feedback. You can leave those in the comments below. And lastly, I know there's a woman in your life that needs this information. Go ahead and pass it along to her so that she can create this deeper connection with herself and you in the process. I'll see you guys soon. Enjoy. Enjoy.